Hi guys, Shani with Healing Elements. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be something really um, informative for anybody that, or validating for anybody who has had experience with a loved one or yourselves for that matter, having um, you know a stroke or Alzheimer's or brain damage in which it affects um, mobility and also the ability to communicate in any way. This is the story of my dad, my daddy's stroke. I always speak about him. I love talking about him. He has passed away. He passed away from something separate, cancer in 2011. However, a big part of um, my journey with my dad, unfortunately, was, you know, sad because from 2005 to 2011, when he passed, he could, he had apraxia and aphasia and he was hemiplegic, meaning half of his body was paralyzed. So he was absolutely immobile in a wheelchair. And a fact, you know, um, apraxia and aphasia can affect people, you know, when they get into an accident, uh, sustained brain damage from any kind of trauma, you know, that kind of thing. And also very, very common uh, with stroke or sometimes even um, when you, have an aneurysm it's just when something you know um, either something that has you know plaque from your arteries has gone in your bloodstream and gone up to your brain and it gets stuck into a blood vessel and so what happens is that part of the brain basically dies and it's never to be regenerated however you can sometimes um, learn to tweak it and you can learn to use other parts of your brain to do the things that you can no longer do after suffering you know um, through whatever, you know, whatever accident it is. And so I wanted to talk about, you know, um, how difficult it is when you're dealing with a situation, maybe if it's not having, you know, your father suffer a stroke, um, you know, and not speak to you when you're like your mom and your dad <clears throat> were best friends and lovers since high school. And you're like, my, I was my mom and dad's best friend, you know, and then just all of a sudden one day, to not ever be able to speak one word, not even on his deathbed, to me, it was extremely, um, you know, of course, heartbreaking. And also it was an extremely lonely road for me and my mom, as far as I don't know if it's an uncomfortability for people um, dealing with a whole new situation. You know, for instance, like, you know how people maybe, and I work for special needs, so it always breaks my heart, but people don't approach uh, somebody with a physical or mental handicap because they feel uncomfortable because they just are so you know to to their defense they're so kind and they appreciate that and don't want to look like they are singling anyone out or they they're nervous they, they're very nervous about how they will be perceived or what to say so it was very lonely road for me and my mom because you know when my dad suffered a stroke prior to that he was you know he was our rock of Gibraltar. He was Scorpio, all Scorpionic energy, day in, day through, right? He was the kind of, um, I can handle anything. I am capable. I'm a, a man. I, you know, hold it down. Um, dog lover. He had two dogs. I mean, you name it. He golfed. My dad was very, very assertive, very capable, and no one did anything for him. He's like, you know, I do it all myself. So when, he, you know, and that was like, he was like that in a social structure so when he had a stroke you know of course I, people came in the beginning like to the hospital and you know they would check on us and everything but you know it was a journey that was again six years long from 2005 to 2011 you know um he suffered substantially um with those symptoms it just killed him because he's always been expressive you know not a motor mouth talker like this pisces but expressive nonetheless you know and very animated and fun he played the guitar and would love movies you know to watch and go places you name it he was absolutely alive he was living his life and so for that to occur to him like shut him down like devastated him not he not only suffered through the brain damage and the residual effects from that he suffered through depression because for him to have to have the assistance of his daughter, his wife, where, you know, it's very personal, like, you know, getting him into the shower. I mean, you name it, like assisting with even talking to doctors saying what he's been experiencing, you know, cause he could not speak. 
you know, anything that we may, um, you know, not take for granted, but we may, you know, use on a daily basis to express ourselves. It a large part of that was taken away from my dad, and he definitely, definitely um, declined as far as his emotional state. Uh, also, because you know, people just. I don't think they knew how to handle it. I don't think they knew how to come over to my mom and dad's house and not have it be the old Tom that it was. They wouldn't know how to, you know, they would feel maybe, um, you know, nervous because, you know, what was my dad going to say back or whatnot. There were the total alternative polar opposite type of people. Like, I don't want to call anyone out either way, but there were awesome, awesome people that literally didn't even blink an eye. Treated my dad the same and literally he would be the most exuberant and lit up and happy ist when those people, you know, would just be like, what's up Tom? Ah, oh, you hanging in there? That sucks in the wheelchair, bro. Let's put on some basketball, right? So people who, you know, consistently supported my mom and my dad, you know, and continued the friendship with him, you know, not everyone didn't know how to handle it, but a large majority of the people also didn't um, know how to handle, you know, or not even know how to handle. Um, it just, it's not something that my mom and I are gonna reach out, you know, to and say, verbally call someone and say, hey, oh my God, you wouldn't believe this. You know, this is what happened and this and that. And, you know, it was, it was really a lot for my mom. My mom was his sole caretaker. I, of course, was out of the house pregnant with my third child when he had a stroke in 2005. And, uh, that is an interesting thing because he had a stroke on Father's Day and I was pregnant and then the baby, my my daughter, Deanna, uh, her due date was Scorpio season. So his birthday is November 1st, she was born November 8th. So you know how everything is connected divinely, that beautiful Scorpion soul, uh, my daughter came to me and I swear, it's like, it's so strange to say, but you know, my dad was with me my entire life and wasn't able to communicate with me. And then I now was having this new Scorpio life, my own daughter who exuded so many beautiful qualities, just like her grandpa, Papao, they called him. And it just, it was like my life raft. I always, I always say, you know, I don't know where I would be without that little girl. Um, just the joy of, you know, continuing my pregnancy and birth and, and the new baby, that gave my parents, my dad and my mom, something of a distraction, something of a joyful point, right? So, you know, with that suffering, we also had that blessing that year in 2005, but when I say suffering, it was, it was, it was hard. There, there's no really words to say it. When me and my mom talk alone, we validate, and it is incredibly, incredibly all-encompassing and you feel the heartbreak of that being in that being in that spot just you know again it was more of the emotion that my mom and I felt because not only were we sad ourselves that he could not speak or communicate couldn't type couldn't write couldn't walk you know he no longer could go the places he could go before you know, all of that, we were sad about that, of course, but it broke our spirit, our souls. It broke our hearts to see him, such a capable, assertive man, um, and the look and the emotion and the vibes, you know, um, from him because he was so disappointed and determined. He would always try, always work with therapists, always try to talk. And when he talked, you know, all that came out was blah, 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 blah like blah, 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 like that. Um, when you have apraxia and aphasia, it does specific things, for instance, it can work in different ways. You can, in your mind, you can be thinking of, I'm gonna say that's a red apple, and then what comes out is go to the garbage, right? It's, you can um, have words mix match, or sometimes, which was what happened to my dad, you go, you know what you're saying, you know, and you're going to form the words and literally the signal is just not getting from your brain down to your tongue to make it come out. So um, like that, that's what the, the word was. And literally he would always try, of course, naturally like to respond, you know, when we were watching like playoffs, a basketball, something like that. And that is what he sounded like. The most intriguing thing to me. And um, I wanted to say this is very common with people that have 
had strokes and can't speak or Alzheimer's or brain damage and they can't speak because of the injury. There is something really magnificent about the brain. Um, you think and, and work and control things um, with different parts of your brain, obviously. So the speech part of your brain is separate from the part of your brain that allows you to sing, okay? And he loved music. So the neatest part ever was the first time, of course, I bawled my eyes out, I got so emotional. First time ever that, you know, we recognized this. I think it was my mom that saw a show or we were told by a doctor, I think we were told by one of the therapists probably, that this could be maybe a saving grace for my dad. So he couldn't just like go off and like sing like, um, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't sing maybe um, like and slow it down to talk. It had to be like a melodic, like for instance, he, you know, you turn on the, the radio, whatever, it's like his stuff, like Leonard Skinner, the Eagles, and he absolutely would, and you could, you could hear the words come out. It wasn't, you know, uh, exactly precise, but you can tell what he was saying and that was amazing. That being said, you know, how would you purposely communicate with songs because he's unable to say, you know, um, I have to give you a message through a song, put on, you know, uh, John Lennon and I'll try to tell you what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? But it was therapeutic and a beautiful outlet. Also something really, really cool is my parents are the best. They were the best, my mom's still here, but they're the best grandparents in the world, like super, super loving. Um, and you know, of course they were so close to the kids. So not for my, my dad not to be involved heavily in their birthdays and, and parties and just everything it was it was heartbreaking but he chose he you know he pulled back like a typical Scorpio beautiful prideful man and you know he of course for comfortability of his physical ailments and because of you know the challenges going into the whole social thing like I said about people not really being comfortable and talking to him etc okay so he did something really beautiful every birthday of my kids or myself he would call up and my mom would start singing happy birthday and he would sing happy birthday happy birth right so it was amazing the the small things that you learn to clutch on to but you know I wanted to express this will probably be one of several videos because I want to speak specifically on a video about the caretaker side my mom's experience how much physical and emotional energy went into doing that and how it completely took a toll on her absolute um, perspective of life. That was her soulmate love of her life. They were married since high school. It was absolutely devastating for her to have him, you know, um, suffer in that way and he was in the hospital for four months ICU and then uh, recovery and then rehab uh, it was really 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 devastating to her to have her best friend who she leaned on for everything completely be um, helpless pretty much and you know everything about it not be able to you know do personal things or whatnot you know it just was devastating and I want to speak on a separate video I think about the caretaker's perspective. I helped my mom, but my mom, I had, like I said, two kids going to elementary school and then I had my daughter who was newborn and I lived, you know, in a separate house and had work, etc. So, you know, I helped and my mom, you know, was able to go to vacations. Like she went with um, this girlfriend, Jenny, to Hawaii after, you know, it was like a year after or something um, to get away. And I would stay with my dad, of course, and caretake for him. But that being said, she was there day in and day out every single day. I went to work, I cared for my child and then I'd visit, but she was there every day to see his sorrow, to see him attempt to stand up out of his wheelchair and not be able to, to see him fall out of his wheelchair and to not have the strength for long periods of time to lift him up, things like that. See him have additional TIAs or mini strokes. Um, so that will be a whole other video. This I just wanted to speak and introduce the concept because I'm always talking, always talking about my dad in a variety of ways. I think that if somebody is special to you in your heart, your soul, and they make such an impact in your life and they suffer in some way, or in my dad's case, pass away, you know, I think for me, it's, you know, uh, bringing his spirit to life, bringing his spirit to life to talk about him. So this is, is I think, expressing validation for anyone out there who is going through that, caring for somebody, um, 
that is changed in a very dramatic way and it's you know it's tough to adjust and it's tough to um, deal with all the intricacies like I said like it's tough to deal with um, the fact that you're noticing maybe this relative isn't coming around for the last two years and you're like wait but they went to the hospital and you start to realize it's because you know they're loving individuals but they just it's sad for them probably I'll validate that to see my dad in that position because he was just so awesome to everyone literally and I think that it was sad to also have my dad completely intuitively know that that's why again it was so great when people like um, I'll shout them out actually you know in particular there was um, my cousin Jody um, my old girl an, an old girlfriend of mine I went to school with Jessica and I'll, I'll shout out her husband Sean they were like amazing like that was the two houses um, and my grandma and there's many many people but these two particular houses Jody's and then Sean and Jessica's they would call themselves and invite my dad and mom over there and just make him feel so comfortable and at ease and like you know help him up you know into their home because he was in the wheelchair if need be it was just amazing and my dad and mom they've always uh, they've always smoked pot they're total like you know legalized marijuana people so he did uh, smoke pot as a form of medication and also just to do you know to do it after his stroke so you know um, may maybe that would be incorporated with some of his visits from people or them you know my dad to their house and it was just awesome to see him you know get that uh, loving attention and sense of normalcy from those individuals so shout out and appreciation to um, I doubt that they would even know I had a channel I think my cousin does but shout out to Jessica Sean and Jody and many other people um, and I know in no way would I ever feel ill um, feelings or resentment toward the people who weren't able to handle it I'm a Pisces son my mom's a Virgo so I don't think she'd mind me saying this uh, she is completely resentful like she remembers who did not come to my dad's funeral She remembers who did not come around she remembers who did or did not come to the hospital And I'm not saying she places blame that could be for her to tell us on my channel Maybe I'll interview her one day, but it's you know it, it, It's brought up when whenever I'm talking to her We're real close whenever I'm talking to her and we're talking about and I'm telling her I'm trying to tell her more and more and more as the days go by um, as she now ironically is caretaking for my Nana my grandma had a stroke and so it's the same scenario isn't life a trip right she spent six years doing that and now um, is watching her own mother not be able to but my, my grandma can speak she is not mobile she's um, hemiplegic too um, and has a, a, a host of problems but can speak that being said it's the same thing that she's living kind of like this enduring type of same nightmare so she absolutely doesn't blame people but we'll bring it up when we're talking about it I try to validate like I said more and more every day like mom what we went through you know it's not you know it's not an attention getting pity party to say what we went through was extremely incredibly painful and it will continue to be painful um, you know as far as we let it for the rest of our lives because it is something I guess I think that it's just like if you don't walk in another man's shoes you won't know how it is it just is incredibly difficult dealing with even the simple concept of somebody not being able to communicate to you one day suddenly for instance it's um, you know devastating in important health concerning ways like my father could not express if he wanted to he couldn't write it down he couldn't say anything you know if let's say his throat hurt okay or his stomach like of course he could point but you're like, what, you you can't swallow? You know, there was just a host of things. So of course it was like, we learned to communicate and like him, yes or no, he could nod. At first, it would be backward. Like he would just be like, no, when he meant yes. And he's like, yes, no, I mean yes. So it was a long process. And again, I'll go into like more segmented videos about certain specific topics. Um, I'm kind of just going through the whole gamut right now. but. Literally, it, it was so um, hurtful, so painful for my mom to endure the love of her life, not being able to communicate sentiments, of course. He was a big, like, you know, um, he, you know, Scorpios, I think, are, my dad was a romantic. I'm not saying he was cheesy, but, you know, like clockwork, they'd get into an argument and the next day she'd wake up and there was like roses on the table. And, you know, he wrote notes and cards and was present again in my children's birth. Um, um, my daughter, Alyssa Marcus, could not obviously, uh, was in the hospital when I gave birth to Deanna. Um, so couldn't be a part of that, but he was so 
you know, expressive and he reminded me a lot of myself as far as like I am now uh, married to a Capricorn and that's Earth, right? I'm Pisces water. My dad was Scorpio water. My mom was Virgo Earth. So it just reminds me of like we're the kind of like outward assertive um, people who are into all that like, you know, right or left side of brain shit. You know what I mean? Like as far as art and, you know, science fiction, fantasy. My mom too, but it's just hard to describe how... Um, an energy that is dimmed by some sort of, you know, um, ailment, um, whether it be physical or mental, it can take the whole, you know, um, tribe into that, you know, energy space of you can, you know, me and my mom are like sponges anyway, you can feel people's vibe, but that can, you know, really, really take a toll on your emotions because of the fact that there's nothing you can do. You cannot make, we tried everything to make my dad happy. He was just going to be pissed off and miserable until, you know, the day he died, which he died in 2011 from cancer, lung cancer. But he literally was just not, he refused to be happy in that condition. You know what I mean? He just was like, nope, why, you know, why should I pretend? He's, my dad's always been authentic. So it was just tough to try to like do things to make him happy, whatever. And of course he'd smile and I'm, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of memories, which was awesome. Um, Aaron, you know, my husband would go and spend time with him and, you know, watch their movies like Lord of the Rings or basketball or football. My dad was a Niner fan, Aaron Raider. So Aaron would, you know, do that kind of thing. But as far as being anything close to truly happy or satisfied with anything in his life, absolutely not. He would always say like, you know, absolutely like, you know, Scorpios. He would say like this, like, like, I just want to die. Like, I just want to be done with this. So the irony is, and what I'll leave off with, I think, on this video is I always wonder to myself because of the fact that he could not communicate things that were ailing him. If something was affecting his health um, prior to when we took, my mom took him to the emergency room in 2011. So this is what happened. I mean, I've heard this similar story from a lot of people. So cancer can spread super rapidly. You know, he had gone to a checkup in 2011, six months before this, everything was fine, x-ray fine, right? And then all of a sudden I was at home, of course, my mom was two hour drive away and she calls me and says, hey, don't worry, but your dad just asked me to go to the hospital. Like I went through the motions, figured it out and he's pointing to his chest. And my mom had known for about three days he had like a what she thought was a cold, a chest cold. So when she took him there, they said, oh, you know, we um, are gonna do x-rays. We're listening to his chest. He needs to be admitted and stay overnight. You go ahead and go home, they told my mom. And we're gonna give him all the x-rays and everything else. So the next morning, this was on my birthday, March 14th, 2011. The next morning was the 14th. They um, were unable to get a hold of my mom. She was, you know, there at the emergency room late, so she was sleeping. It was early in the morning, like 7.30, because I was dropping off the kids. And I get a phone call, and it's the doctor, and it's like a surreal experience. He says to me, um, hi, I cannot get a hold of your mom, and you're the next of kin. You're the only child. I wanted to let you know it's imperative you come here right away. Uh, your father has stage four lung cancer. It is extremely aggressive, and he will die in probably, um, you know, two months or less. So that was intense because he did end up passing away 12 days after he entered the hospital on the 26th of March. So I always wonder to myself, you know, and I think that he may have, my, my intuition tells me he may have known there was something going on with his chest. Maybe he literally was just like, I know what's up and I'm just going to sit on it. But I don't want to put that opinion, you know in concrete it could have been that it was so aggressive and nothing no symptoms were happening you know and that happened that was also extremely difficult to deal with and that's separate from the stroke that'll i'm sure i'll make a video about that just how you know about cancer and how traumatic and devastating it is to literally you know be going oh that's weird something fell off the mirror strange anyway you know how um you know incredibly surreal it is and you know i don't know when you have not gone through something like um seeing someone suffer with cancer it was just surprising to me how 
quickly people can pass away and how you know there is scenarios where you come in to the doctor or they, you find out you have cancer or your loved one has cancer and there's nothing you can do about it you know he would not have um, he would have passed away no matter what we could have started started chemotherapy and radiation but they said that he was so sick it probably would have killed him if on the first round so we decided to go the natural route let him go through hospice we thought it would be a couple months it was 12 days later so that was completely separate and it also you know it just surprises me the um, amount of time it was just so small time and I always to end up and tie my tie my subjects back on because I'm always rambling is I always wonder if he was not you know suffering through the residuals of a stroke you know if he didn't have brain damage if he was just walking around going to work like he did he was like a general manager and, and loved his job I mean if he was able to speak I always wonder if he would have noticed or called the doctor months prior or anything like that it has to be something that I wonder and it's not like I'm going back in time like I, I want these videos to be put out but I also want to be clear that I completely accept and honor all of my experiences it sounds macabre but I even honor the experience of watching my father die, although it was incredibly sad, terrible, and um, you know, unimaginably traumatic. That being said, now of course, being on my, I've always been on a spiritual awakening path. Um, it started to occur to me though, with a bang in 2011 after he passed. Like literally the day after he passed, I had a dream that was precognitive, and I mean, it was like for five minutes, and then two days later, I and I. You know, I told when I woke up, I said, I had the most clearest dream, I told my family. And it was totally surprising to us all. Uh, two days later, the exact scenario happened and everybody's like, you know. So things like that started to happen. I spoke on my alcoholism, my battle with trying to cope with my dad's death on another video. But that being said, because I was drinking and I was taking the Xanax and asking, you know, what can I do for this? I was, um, you know, like, um, um, suffocating my um, energy flow like I was prohibiting my ability to channel spirit and be spiritual so as soon as I began to release that and do healthy things instead of drink you know do yoga but I already always did yoga but I mean sober and really coming to grips with okay you know what I don't have to feel guilty for being happy in my life my dad would want me to be happy let's do this right so you know um, it started to ramp up and then 2015 is when all the assumption like anything you could name ascension symptoms dark night of the soul everything possible um, you know getting involved in you know um, more and more involved which have always been in astrology you know learning to completely do a birth chart um, learning how to do energy healing Reiki classes, um, doing oracle cards and readings for people. It just really became an everyday part of, um, you know, myself medicating in a healthy way, right? And that's not to say that I haven't, um, you know, made um, mistakes since 2015 as far as like not running to alcohol, you know, that's happened. You know, I'm just saying I don't want these videos to come across like, oh, you know, I'm like, woe is me or... Um, I'm expressing this because I just want everyone to realize that, you know, shit happened to me. No, no, no. This is to like just tell you guys, although I've been through a handful and, you know, a handful more of positive and negative things in my life, it didn't, you know, contribute to the total sum of the person who I am. It, you know, affected me and I think that, you know, um, it's so, so profound when you cannot get those loving words um, said, you know, it was just a, it was just such a strange scenario for him to be in that bed dying of cancer and for him not to be able to speak his peace to his sisters, to my mom, to me. And it was just incredibly sad. So I really appreciate you as always listening to my story. If anyone you know has suffered from a stroke, brain damage, apraxia, aphasia, uh, is, is paralyzed or you know, um, limited in any way, shape or form, I send my love and support to you. And I just wish nothing but continued um, improvement on your mental well-being as well as whomever is suffering through that, um, most importantly. Okay, blessings, love and light, you guys.